I recently published a video where I showed you how I create a simple design system for my buttons using Figma, and this video is gonna be a part two of that, where I show you how I actually take that design in Figma and put it inside my Generate Press and Generate Blocks install. Now with the new 1.9 version of Generate Blocks and 1.7 of Generate Blocks Pro, that's completely revamped the global style systems, it's gonna really change how I'll build these things out in practice. So in this video, I thought I'd show you how I would build this out using the new systems that's gonna make it really easy and flexible for us to use. If that sounds interesting to you, then let's get started. Okay, so as a refresher, or if you didn't watch the original Figma video, this is what we're gonna be setting up today. Essentially, what we have are three different buttons. We have our primary button, our contrast button, and our secondary button. Now, each one of these buttons has a hover state, which you see listed below each one of them. This primary one gets a little bit lighter of a background. The contrast one gets a little bit darker of a background. And the secondary button goes from a semi-transparent background to a fully opaque background. So what we're gonna be doing inside of Generate Blocks is creating a generic button class where we house all the styles that are similar between all of these same buttons. As you see, they all have the same font size, they have the same padding, and they have the same border radiuses. And then we'll create some modifier classes for the things that are different. Things like the different background colors you see between the different buttons. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and jump here into Generate Blocks. And I'm gonna go ahead and add a button to my page. Now, when you add a button from Generate Blocks, it's gonna come with some styles already applied to the block level. Things here like under spacing, we see padding set for the button. We also have background colors and text color set. But for our global style system, we actually wanna set all of this at the class level and not the block level. So the first thing we're gonna do is set up our primary button class, which is gonna have all the shared styles across the three different buttons, plus the styles for our primary button, since that's what we're gonna be using most often. So I'm gonna go ahead here and add the class BTN, which is short for button, and hit create. Now we're given these four different options here. Most of the time I find myself using the blank style, but in this case, I wanna go ahead and take what was applied to the block level and move it from the block to the class so there's no more styles on the block level itself. So I'm gonna choose this fourth option here to move the local block styles over to the class, even though we're gonna go ahead and override those. So with that selected, we'll go ahead and hit start editing. Now, if we go in here into spacing, we can see it brought over those values from the default generate blocks button. Now for me, I typically wanna use M's as my unit on the padding for buttons. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this to one M on the top. We'll go with two M's on the left and right and one M on the bottom. And that'll give us the general button shape. I'm not bothering to go and make these exact to how they were in Figma. You can obviously style these however you need. Now looking at our original designs, obviously we needed to set the padding around the button, but we can go ahead and set the border radius and the color of text on all of these natural states of the button. So let's go back into generate blocks here. We'll go down to our typography and we'll set the text color to our base zero color, which is white. And we'll go back to borders, border radius, and I'm just gonna make this six pixels. Now this covers all the shared styles, but let's go ahead and style this button class as our primary button, since like I said, we're gonna be using that most often. Here, we're gonna to wanna to go down to backgrounds, and we're gonna choose the background color, which is our brand primary. I've already loaded all those colors from Figma inside this install. Next, we need to go and cover the hover states. So I'll go up here to the hover selector. We'll scroll down, and we're gonna change this background color from the brand primary to the brand alt. So now when we hover over this button, we should see it changing from the darker blue to the lighter blue. With all that in place, we've set up everything we need for the shared styles between our buttons and our primary button. I'm gonna go ahead and hit update here so all those get saved to the system. Now we need to go ahead and set up our contrast and secondary buttons. So to do this, I'm just gonna add another button to our page. And we'll go ahead and add the BTN class since that's gonna give us all the base styles for our button. Now again, anytime you add a button inside Generate Blocks, it's gonna apply all the default block level styles. It's a little bit annoying that every time you need to go back here and clear out those block level styles. So once we go ahead and do that, you'll see this button now matches my primary button. In case you missed that, let me go ahead and do it again. As I add a new button to the page, it obviously brings in all the default styles. So even when I go ahead and add the BTN class, I now have the BTN styles being loaded, but the block level styles overriding it. So you do have to clear out those local styles each time. 
All right, so this time let's go ahead and work on our contrast button. So again, I'm gonna add a class. I'm gonna call this btn double dash contrast since we're creating a modifier to our button class. We'll go ahead and hit create and we'll start with a blank style. Now, all we need to apply to this contrast class is the things that are just different that need to be overridden from our original primary button. So in this case, all we need to do is change these background colors, which are just different on the contrast button than they are on the primary button. So we'll go back here into generate blocks, make sure we're selected on this button and that we have our button contrast class highlighted and we'll go into backgrounds and change this background color to our contrast color. Again, we'll go into hover, background colors, and we'll change this to our contrast alt. Let's go ahead and save this. And now when we add a new button, we add our generic button class, we clear out the styles, and we have our primary button. If we wanna make this our contrast button, then we just add the button contrast class to it, and now it's the contrast button. And it's just as easy to get rid of it as well. We can go in here to button contrast and remove that, and we're back to our primary button. Now lastly, we wanna go ahead and set up this secondary button. So I'll go in here and we'll just start again just so we get some more practice with this. I'm gonna add a button. I'm gonna add our BTN class to get our default styling, and I'm gonna clear out these local styles. Now we're back to our default button. Now let's add a new class. I'm gonna do BTN double dash secondary and hit create. And we're gonna start with a blank style. Now for this button, we just have a semi-transparent white background that changes to white on hover. And we need to actually change the text color on hover as well for this one. The rest of them, the text always stayed white. So let's go ahead and go back in here, make sure we're selected on our button with our button secondary class. And we're gonna to go to our backgrounds. We'll choose a color. I'm gonna choose the white from my palette here, but I'm gonna go ahead and bring the transparency down to 0.1. Now we can go back up here to hover and we can change the background color to our full white, fully opaque color on hover. And we need to change the typography color from the default white we had before to either our text color or our brand color. I think in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and use the brand primary since it's so dark. So at this point, we have that semi-transparent button. And when we hover over it, the text color goes to the brand primary color and the background goes fully white. Now, one thing I noticed now that I've built all these out is this transition actually happens immediately and I'd like to have a little bit of an easing effect. So the great thing about using the global styles and the classes in this case is we can click on any of these and go into our BTN class that's shared between all of these buttons and make that quick change. So here under effects, I'm gonna to go to transition. We'll leave the transition property on all. I'm gonna change the duration to 0.3 and we'll change the timing function to ease in out. So now you can see when I hover on any of these buttons, that actually eases between the two different states instead of directly to it. The reason we were able to affect all the buttons with this one change is we did it to the BTN class, which is shared between all of the buttons. So we didn't have to go back and do this to each button individually. As you can imagine, when you have a huge website with tons of buttons all over it, using a class system like this really saves you a lot of heartache in the long run. With that done, we'll go ahead and hit update and we're done setting up our system. I've been only using the new versions to generate blocks as I've been playing around with different things. And I can't tell you how excited I am about this new way of working. Sure, it's gonna take a little bit of getting used to and retraining on your part, but I'm telling you the change is well worth the effort. The fact that we can make some of these more global changes a whole lot easier inside of generate blocks, especially directly from the editor is a total game changer for this system. Hopefully you learned something in this video. If you did, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you wanna make sure to catch the next ones, go ahead and hit subscribe and we'll see See you then.